Hi, my name is Samantha Kennedy, and I am a Family and Consumer Sciences Extension Agent with the University of Florida IFAS Extension Service. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about different kinds of flour. Um, baking requires, for the most part, some sort of flour in some kind of measurement in some way, shape, or form. And I want to talk to a little bit about how different flour can make a big difference. So you want to make sure that you're careful in choosing the flour that you need. The most common flour that you'll find uh, or in a recipe is, is all-purpose flour. It's all-purpose flour because you can use it in a lot of different ways or a lot of different recipes. Um, most recipes that you'll find are going to be calling for all-purpose flour. So when you go to the store to purchase flour, um, you're going to want to be very careful in making sure that you choose all-purpose because there's also whole wheat flour, which is not always interchangeable, or rye flour, which is especially not always interchangeable, among other, times, uh, other kinds of flour that you'll find as well. Um, when we're talking about all-purpose flour, it's wheat flour, and so it's made out of, it has gluten, so if you have any sort of celiac disease or something like that where you can't have gluten, you can't have all-purpose flour, and that's where you get to the specialty flours. We're going to focus mostly today on all-purpose flour and the most common ones that you'll find. Um, specialty, this one's not really a specialty flour. It's fairly common. This is rye flour, um, but it is not interchangeable with all-purpose. So if you use rye flour instead of, instead of all-purpose flour when you're making cookies or something, it's not going to come out very well. But you're going to want to make sure that if it's something that you don't use very often, you only use it periodically, you're going to want to store it either in the refrigerator or the freezer to keep it fresh because the oils from the bran part of the wheat kernel or the rye kernel is going to um, go rancid if you leave it sitting out at the room temperature too long. So you want to store your, your flour in the freezer. I store all my flour in the freezer anyway, even if it's all purpose, because it, it stays fresher longer without being exposed to the air in your cabinet. It also helps keeps any kind of critter that might want to live in your flour from living in your flour. So one thing you might want to see a lot though, uh, or you might see periodically in a recipe, is self-rising flour. You can buy self-rising flour um, in the store alongside the all-purpose flour. And again, you want to be careful because you want to get all-purpose flour instead of self-rising flour if that's what your recipe calls for because if you use self-rising instead of all-purpose, it's not going to turn out the way you want. So be careful um, in reading the label when you're purchasing flour. But I don't usually keep any self-rising flour on hand because I don't use it that often. So what I will do is I'll just make my own self-rising flour. And what you can do is take all-purpose flour, because all self-rising flour is, is all-purpose flour with baking powder and salt already added into it. So you don't have to add those extra things. And so if I need self-rising flour for a recipe, I'm just gonna make my own. So I'm gonna take all-purpose flour, which is what is in this tub here. It's one cup of all-purpose flour. So you want to make sure that it's leveled off because you don't want more than a cup. You want to make sure your measurements are as precise as possible. So one cup of all-purpose flour. One and a half teaspoons of baking powder and Baking powder and not baking soda, you want to make sure you use the correct ingredient. Baking powder is what goes into this and not baking soda. And we'll level it off. Add that. And then we need a half of a teaspoon as well. And I'm just leveling it off over a piece of parchment paper here on the counter. You can level it off over the container as well if you would like. So we are adding that. So that's a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. And then you have your extra here on the paper. You can just put it right back into the container so you don't have any waste. And then a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And this is just regular table salt. We're going to use a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm going to pour it out over this parchment paper 
just so I don't make a mess. Level that off, pour that in there. And then I like to use a fork to blend it just to make sure all the ingredients are blended, well blended together. And that's so you can have one cup of self-rising flour that you've made yourself. And that way you don't have to keep a whole five pound bag of it on hand. So you wanna be careful again when you're choosing your flour for your recipes that you get the right kind of flour that the recipe calls for. Most flours are not interchangeable because they, they react differently in the chemical reactions for baking. And so it is important to keep the right kinds of flour on hand and to use the right measurements for flour as well so that you don't have too much flour or too little flour because that can also alter the consistency and texture of your final product. So keeping your flour stored properly and keeping the right kind of flour on hand will make your baking projects so much easier. So thank you for listening.